Trump made a very ominous and dark speech about the decline of America. Uh, and while doing so, music began playing and the music sounded exactly like a song called WWG1WGA, where we go one, we go all. The former president of the United States, who wants to be the next president, is now directly spreading the slogans of the conspiracy cult QAnon. Trump has posted or reposted more than 100 messages linked to QAnon since the beginning of the year. The salt of the theory it is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but uh, is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. And we are actually. QAnon, it is this theory that a, uh, Democrats are a satanic pedophile ring and that you are the savior of that. Now, can you just once and for all state that that is completely not true? So disavow QAnon yeah. in its entirety? I know nothing about QAnon. They are very strongly against pedophilia. And I agree with that. I mean, I do agree okay. with that. And I agree but with that. There's not a strongly. satanic uh, pedophile. I have no idea. I know you don't about know that? that? Okay. No, I don't know you that. Just and neither, this neither do you know that. Okay. When this country is gone, the rest of the world would follow. The rest of the world would follow. That's the importance of this country. On January 29, 2018, and Anon asked you if Trump could work the phrase tip top into his State of the Union speech as a shout out to Anons. Instead, Trump said it at the 2018 Easter egg roll with the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland standing next to him. Eat this incredible house or building or whatever you want to call it because there really is no name for it. It is special. And we keep it in tip top shape. We call it sometimes tippy-top shape, and it's a great, great place. Hugh has used the phrase Alice in Wonderland in posts. Trump didn't just fulfill an Anon's request, he pointed at Q. An Anon requested a hashtag Obamagate tweet from Trump, and Trump posted Obamagate without the hashtag. On April 12, 2018, Q posted Twitter down. Exactly one year later on April 12, 2019, Twitter went down. The same day that Twitter went down, the NSA posted a picture of AQ on their Twitter page. This is important because Q has referred to the NSA in posts. On November 8, 2017, Trump posted a picture on Twitter with everyone giving a thumbs up. When an image is posted on Twitter it's given a random file name when it's uploaded. If you connect the tips of the thumbs it makes AQ, plus the file name for the image says do it Q at the beginning and ends with AQ. Q used plus signs to represent the puppet masters in a post. The House of Saad, the Rothschilds, and Soros. On November 6, 2017 at 507 and 57 seconds, Q posted, Nothing is random, everything has meaning, plus plus plus. Seven minutes later Trump posted on Twitter and the tweet had plus 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 at the end just like the Q post. Fifty minutes later Trump tweets about Saudi Arabia. The plus 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 in the Q post represented the House of Saud. On November 11, 2017, Q said that one side of the triangle had been removed, referring to Saudi Arabia, and that the other sides are falling. Uh, in the last few months, the crown prince, the now crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, has consolidated power and pushed out several other leading candidates for the Saudi throne. The 32-year-old bin Salman has made public statements about not only fighting terrorism, but also modernizing Saudi Arabia and tackling corruption. 
and the Trump administration counts him as a valuable ally. A remarkable times in Saudi Arabia, the hugely influential Sunni Muslim kingdom. There's been an unprecedented anti-corruption purge with sweeping arrests of senior politicians and business leaders and members of the royal family. Among those princes, military officers and top officials uh, that were arrested in the last 24 hours, Prince Al Walid bin Talal. He's one of the world's richest men, a major investor in Citibank, Twitter, and the parent company of Fox News, 21st Century Fox. He's also somebody who has publicly feuded in, uh, with uh, President Trump, and President Trump has accused him of trying to buy U.S. politicians. These are incredible times in Saudi Arabia. There's never been anything quite like it. And in some ways, it's very exciting. His supporters are saying, this is the man who's gonna lead us to the future, who's setting the stage for a modern economy, a modern society, and jobs for all the millions of Saudis who are pouring out of schools and universities. Others though, especially the older guard, are extremely worried. We're particularly pleased to be selling the jewels of Hannah de Rothschild. The jewels that we're selling, which uh, comprise a magnificent pearl and diamond tiara, and a bracelet and matching brooch. Billionaire George Soros is handing control of his $25 billion empire to his son, Alex. His son, Alex, is 37 years old. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal over the weekend, he said he's more political than his father, and he hinted at significant, a significant financial role for the Soros organization in next year's U.S. elections. Aviation call signs are unique identifiers assigned to aircraft like a nickname, but the call sign doesn't have to be the same for every flight. In 2018 there were civil and military aircraft spotted flying with the call sign Q, or Anon. The United Parcel Service, the U.S. Army, and the U.S. Air Force. There was even a Royal Australian Air Force spotted flying with the call sign Anon. On December 7, 2018, Trump jumped on Air Force One to fly to Kansas. When Air Force One was wheels up, the call sign popped up as Q0. The fact that there was a Q in the call sign was big, but the question was, what did the zero mean? After the flight, Q confirmed that Q0 means Q+. That means Trump was flying with the call sign Q+. The reason that's big is because Anand's think Trump is the person that posted on the Intel board as Q+. Not only does that point to Q, but it points to Trump being Q+. On October 2, 2018, Q posted 5347 by itself. On November 6, 2018, the U.S. Senate election results were 5347. Q called the Senate votes a month in advance. On January 13, 2018, Q posted checkmate, which is a victory in chess. In 2024, Trump posted a hashtag by itself. In chess the hashtag means checkmate. On October 5, 2018, Q posted, the picture will be the signifier, and dropped the link to an account with the handle, QAnon baby. They respect us, that's more important. Look at that beautiful baby, look at that beautiful baby. Wow, what a baby. What a baby! That is a beautiful baby! That's like from an advertisement! Look how happy that baby is! So beautiful. Thank you, darling. That's really nice. It's a, it's a great thing. Is that your husband? That's a great thing. Thank you. Congratulations, husband. Man! What a picture. But we're going to have the country all set. On July 17, 2019, Trump stopped in the middle of his speech to point out a baby, took a picture with his hands and said what a picture. When the camera pulled back, the baby had a big Q on their back. This happened on the 17th day of the month. Q is the 17th letter of the alphabet. On October 10, 2019, Trump posted a video on Twitter. At the 1 minute and 34 second mark, Q baby pops up. If you hold the 1, and add the 3 and 4, you get 17. 
The GOP hearing on the DOJ's investigation into the Clinton Foundation was set for December 5, 2018. Pew started dropping D5 in posts like something big was going to happen. On November 30, 2018, George Bush Sr. died. His funeral date was set for December 5, 2018, and the GOP hearing was cancelled. On December 3, 2018, Pew asked what the odds are that the Bush funeral would be on December 5th, and pointed us to the empirical rule. Then Q posted, postponed, well played deep state, please allow us to counter. Q's promise to counter had announced wondering if something was going to happen at the funeral. That's when the secret envelopes came into play. Cameras just happened to be in the perfect positions. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. Pick the people that run those agencies and the deputies that are pledging allegiance to the new world order and good governance. And then I think you have the Inspector General do some spot audits to make sure that there is real compliance. The burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way. Things like technological change, uh, uh, things like mass media, uh, things like the market are all subject to uh, our control. Since then, we established a liberal world order and now is the time when things are shifting. We're going to, there's going to be a new world order out there. Uh, look, I think that uh, everyone is going to have to take a hard look at where they want to be uh, at this moment in history as we're looking at efforts across the country to, uh, pre to prevent people from being able to exercise their fundamental rights. The chair declares the joint session dissolved. Where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. On December 11th, 2017, Q posted, follow the wives. All the envelopes were delivered to the wives. And Anon asked Q what was in the envelopes. Q answered, our promise to counter. In 2020, an Anon made a D5 connection. A declassified memorandum for the Director of National Intelligence, about the unmasking of General Flynn. The document's date is the 4th of May. 4 equals D, and May equals 5. Q replied, they thought it meant December 5th. On February 22, 2018, Q posted, fight fight fight. Q only posted that one other time in over 4,000 posts. When Trump was shot, and had Secret Service covering him, not knowing if there were more shooters, he broke protocol to put his head and fist up to say, fight fight fight. If he was going to die, he wanted those to be his last words. Each of you enters service at a truly exciting time for our country. For we are witnessing the great reawakening. With this strategy, we are calling for a great reawakening of America. Now we are calling for a great reawakening of nations, for the revival of their spirits, their pride, their people, and their patriotism. On September 19, 2017, Trump called for a great reawakening of nations in his UN speech. On October 6, 2017, Trump said it was the calm before the storm, and on October 28, 2017, he dropped the first post. You guys know what this represents? Well, I don't know, maybe it's the calm before the storm. What's your storm? Could be 
Um, before the storm. What storm is We have the world's great military people in this room. I will tell you that. And uh, we're going to have a great evening. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. You guys know what this represents? And somebody that's been with me from day one, a real, he's a real general. You know, we have the real generals, and we have the fake woke generals that did so poorly in Afghanistan, should have all been fired. But this is a real general, Keith Kellogg. Right, Keith? And this is a great group. It's good to see you, Keith. He's been with me from before day one, right? He said, that guy should run. Uh, we got to get him to run. I like those guys. They were here before I ran. You know, this Quite a few of them. General Flynn, along with General Kellogg, and some of our other friends. We have so many friends. Uh, we have over 200 generals and admirals supporting us now. We had 17 Congressional Medal of Honor winners endorse me. When I first came here, I was only in Washington 17 times in my life. On December 9, 2017, at 1034, Q posted a quote thanking the military. Then Q pointed us to timestamps, and let us know a proof was incoming. Three hours later Trump tweeted the exact same thing without the quotation marks. Q quoted Trump's Army-Navy game tweet three hours before he posted it. On February 22, 2019, Q posted the best is yet to come. My fellow Americans, for our movement, for our children, and for our beloved country, and I say this, despite all that's happened, the best is yet to come. For we still believe that the best is yet to come. On June 13th, 2020, Q posted, seeing is believing, sometimes you can't tell the public the truth, you must show them. Only then will people find the will to change. It had to be this way. This is not another four-year election. 2020 to 2024 has been called the PUS. Let the deep state steal 2020, and let the people see for themselves. In 2022, Trump confirmed it. One of the, the important factors of the pause is that we see how bad they've done. So we will be able to do it properly, and it will be much easier. Everybody will agree with us because everybody sees what a bad job has been done during this two-year period, and it will be a four-year period. Everybody sees that. It will be much easier for us to do what has to be done. Those text messages were sent from the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. I looked at past inaugurations as far back as George Bush. Not once did the military walk up and stand behind the president. The man on the right is a judge advocate general, and the man on the left is military intelligence. What Trump says when they're standing behind him is also important. Today's ceremony, however, has very special meaning. Because today, we are not merely transferring power from one administration to another, or from one party to another. But we are transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. On November 1, 2017, Q posted, The only way is the military. Once 11.3 verifies as first marker. Some people assumed it was an arrest date, but they were way off. 11.3 is a section in the DOD Law of War Manual discussing belligerent occupation of a country. End of occupation and duration of Geneva Convention obligations. The status of belligerent occupation ends when the conditions for its application are no longer met. Certain Geneva Convention obligations with respect to occupied territory continue for the duration of the occupation after the general close of military operations. End of occupation. Belligerent occupation ceases when the conditions for its application are no longer met. In particular, as discussed below, 
the status of belligerent occupation ceases when the invader no longer factually governs the occupied territory or when a hostile relationship no longer exists between the state of the occupied territory and the occupying power. Belligerent occupation ends when the occupying power no longer has effectively placed the occupied territory under its control. For example, an uprising by the local population may prevent the occupying power from actually enforcing its authority over occupied territory. Similarly, the occupying power's expulsion or complete withdrawal from the territory would also suffice because the former occupying power generally would not be able to control sufficiently the occupied territory. Rest in peace Mr. President, JFK. Through your wisdom and strength, since your tragic death, patriots have planned, installed, and by the grace of God, activated the beam of light. We will forever remember your sacrifice. May you look down from above and continue to guide us as we ring the bell of freedom, and destroy those who wish to sacrifice our children, our way of life, and our world. We, the people. This has never been attempted before. The use of the general public to counter the propaganda push by the controlled media. Analysis indicates that situational awareness of the general public is expanding at a massive pace. Attacks indicate the loss of generalized information control by the mainstream media. Military, and civilian alliance. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. The American populace is facing an unconventional warfare scenario. This is information warfare.